June is looking to be one of the biggest months for cozy gamers. And the best part is, every single game I mention on this list is coming out on the Nintendo Switch. We've got a farming sim like nothing else we've ever seen, and a whole host of puzzle and narrative adventure games that I cannot wait to share with you. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you never miss some cozy gaming news, and let's get on with this. First up is Fall of Porcupine coming June 15th. I've played the demo already, and it's safe to say I've fallen in love with this game. This is a 2D narrative adventure where you play as Finley the Pigeon, who starts a new job as a doctor. I know, you're already sold on the game. It begins when there are just a few days left of summer before a change of season stirs up the sleepy town. At first, the town seems to be a friendly place where everyone knows one another, but over time, you soon realize that not everyone is as honest as they may seem and that maybe you're not quite as safe here as you first thought. In this, not only do you get to explore the hospital, but also the entirety of this small town. Getting to know each of the townspeople as you go and as you talk to the people, you get to choose your own dialogue options that will influence your relationships with them. But you can't get too caught up in socializing because you can't forget you're actually a doctor. So you need to go and do your job as well. When you're in the hospital, you have to diagnose and treat the patients that you're given. Diagnosis is done through conversation and then the treatment itself is then done from a series of separate mini games. Now, if the demo is anything to go by, the mini games are absolutely fantastic. The one I really enjoyed involved holding down different buttons on the controller, but the really genius thing about it is it made you contort your hands into all these different positions that were really tricky to hold. And I think that's such a smart way to kind of reenact you doing surgery. I loved it. The mini games you encounter are so varied and not just limited to the hospital. In the demo itself, you played a few different mini games when you're in the bar, including a bar fight as well. I really love this mix between story, but also the aspects of doing your job in the hospital. And the dialogue in the demo was not only funny, witty, but also really heartfelt when it needed to be. Now, I must admit they've kept the game's description incredibly vague. And I think that's because it's going to have an absolutely incredible story from start to finish. And given how incredible the demo was, this is definitely one of the games I am looking forward to the most in June. Then we have Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life coming June 27th. This is definitely the biggest release in June and the one that so many people are looking forward to. Now, I do just quickly want to mention, as I've seen this on TikTok a lot, that the Story of Seasons developers are the original Harvest Moon developers. Some things happened in the past, meaning they lost the rights to the name Harvest Moon. So don't worry, this is a remake of Harvest Moon A Wonderful Life done by the same developers. At first, Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life appears to be like every other Story of Seasons game. You begin a new life in a town called Forgotten Valley, a town in which your father dreamed of running a farm, and now, years later, you're the one to do it. Each day is filled with your classical farming sim stuff. You can farm, you can fish, you take care of animals, and you can even befriend the locals in the town. But the thing that makes this Story of Seasons game stand out and the reason I am looking forward to it so, so much is not only does your character age, but so does every one of the townspeople in the town. As this game spans approximately 30 years of your adulthood life. And this actually solves one of my biggest issues with farming sims. Normally, when I play a farming sim, by the time you've reached the third year of a typical game, you've kind of seen and done all the events and every year kind of becomes more or less the same. But that's not the case in Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life. Because the fact that you and everyone in the game age gives a brand new take on the farming sim genre. Like for example, if you find a partner, settle down and have a kid, not only will the kid age alongside you, but also that kid's future is fully determined by your parenting choices. It also means you can't play the game in the same way you normally play it. When I play farming sims, normally making friends with the townspeople is one of the last things that I do. But if I play this farming sim like that, I will miss so much of what makes this special. 
I won't see the character's age. I won't see the interactions between characters change. So when I play this, I'm forced to take a brand new approach to farming sims. Now, if you played the original Harvest Moon A Wonderful Life, you'll be glad to know they've made a few significant changes. The biggest one is more character customization options. But there's also four new seasonal events that will let you take pictures and selfies. There's also the addition of rare crops and the ability to have a wedding, along with a ton of other changes. Personally, the thing that's got me the most excited is the fact that festivals will be different year upon year as everyone ages. Harvest Moon A Wonderful Life is so many people's favourite farming sim, and I can't wait to see if they really did it justice. Then on June 13th, we have Dordoyne. If you're looking for the perfect game on a budget, then this is the game for you. As it's already been listed at under £13 on Steam, and I expect it to be the same price at launch on the Switch too. This is a narrative story where you play as Mimi, who, after a breakup and being laid off of work, decides to ditch her big city life to return to Dordogne, a place where her and her late grandmother shared many happy memories. And throughout the game, you will journey through the stunning, hand-painted watercolor environment as Mimi recalls the memories of her childhood and journals them in her personalized binder. The gameplay is a mixture between narrative interactions, where your choice of conversation will impact your relationships, and also small puzzles as well. I've already seen snippets of the voice acting and it seems incredible. I feel like this is going to be an emotion-filled adventure, and I really do look forward to this journey. Then we have Little Friends Puppy Island on the 27th. If you're like me and you can't own a pet because landlords suck, then this might be the perfect game for you, as it's basically a different take on Nintendo dogs, allowing you to own your very own dog. You can bathe them, feed them, play and walk them with a ton of different trails to pick from and eight different locations to explore. They even state that they have over 350 accessories and costumes to dress your dogs up and take pictures of them. And I really like the idea that you can decorate the island as well. Now, they did also mention the fact that you can train your puppies, although with no microphone built into the Switch, I am really interested to see how they're going to do this. I miss Nintendogs so much, so I'm definitely going to buy this to see if it has the same vibe and the nostalgic feel that Nintendogs had. Then on June 8th, we have Harmony, The Fall of Reveri. This is another narrative adventure game, and I am very interested. Now, I must admit the story that they've given us is a lot to take in, but let's just go with it. <laughs> you play as Polly, who returned home after a few years abroad to look for her missing mother. Only when she returns, she realizes that her hometown has drastically changed, with a mega corporation using its power to control the population. But not long after realizing the community is in danger, she discovers she has the gift of clairvoyance, allowing her to connect to the Reveri, also known as a realm of the aspiration of humanity. And when Polly arrives there, she becomes Harmony, the goddess who has the power to choose the aspiration that will rule over the Reveri, and they control the balance between their world and ours. There are six different aspirations to choose from, and whoever you choose will lead with your help, with each of the aspirations having their own personality and goals. And as you help them out, the link between their world and our world becomes stronger therefore increasing the influence of your actions on our state of the world. And of course, like with many narrative adventure games, your decision will impact the direction of the story. Now, I've already watched the first 30 minutes or so of gameplay on YouTube, and although it is voice acted, it's not completely voice acted. And it's definitely not as cutscene heavy as I maybe first thought it was. So it definitely leans heavier on the novel side than the visual side sometimes, but basically, all of Polly's inner thoughts are all written, whilst her dialogue with other characters is all voice acted. But I will say the cutscenes you do get are animated beautifully. I am so intrigued by the world building of this, 
and I cannot wait to see how the story pans out. I do love a good narrative adventure game because they're always so replayable because they have different endings. Then on the 30th, we have Crime O'Clock. Now, if I'm being honest, I'm not sure I fully understand the game from its description. I think it's going to be one of those things that you need to play to understand, but I'm going to give it my best shot. <laughs> In this, you are a crime detective who solves crimes through time that should have never happened. Every map you visit has multiple time markers, allowing you to solve crime through five different ages. But the best part is, by traveling through time, meeting the characters and resolving cases, what you do in one era will actually affect another. But despite the different maps, there is a common thread running throughout the entire game, as something or someone is actively trying to disrupt time. Given the massive scale of the map, it also seems to be a mix between puzzle solving and kind of where's Wally. And I love this kind of different take of a traditional point and click game. Now, the good news is if you're playing it on something like a Switch in handheld or a Switch Lite, you can zoom into the map so you can see things more clearly. And there looks to be 40 cases to play and solve throughout the game. Then we have Ghost Trick also on the 30th. This is a remastered version of the original, and it is a murder mystery where you play as a ghost trying to figure out who you were and who murdered you. The nice thing about trying to solve a crime as a ghost though, is that you have a few perks. Because now you can possess objects and have the ability to influence the land of the living and hopefully change someone's fate. I've heard such good things about the original game, so I can't wait to give it a go. And I feel like some murder mystery is definitely cozy. And then finally, we have Hello Good Boy. That's actually coming out at the end of this month, but I didn't include it in my last video, so I thought I'd include it now so you can have a game that you don't have to wait for. And from the looks of it, Hello Good Boy sounds heartbreakingly beautiful. You play as Echo, a boy who's new to the afterlife with no memory of how he got here. But although he's confused, he's not completely alone as he has Coco, a strangely familiar dog by his side to help him solve the mystery of his new existence. As you journey through the afterlife, you'll find other souls who are also on their own journey each with their own story to tell and tasks you can help with. But unfortunately, you can't help everyone as your time is limited. And with multiple endings, your decisions on who you'll help and who you won't help will have consequences and will affect which ending you get. I love the fact that the game's aesthetic is beautifully almost childish, but the game's message definitely isn't. I'm really looking forward to playing it and I'm ready for the emotional damage it will cause. <laughs> Those are my top picks for the upcoming games in June, but if you want to see a list of games I play when I'm stressed, click this video here.